we're going to take a look at that smoke detector I took down and see why it's not working. And no, I'm not going to be opening up the radioactive Immersium 241 uh, uh, module on it. We're going to tear it down and see if we can make this thing work. Let's check it out. This is an old smoke detector that I took out of service that would no longer buzz. We're going to take this one apart and uh, see what makes it tick. Now, word of warning, this is an ionization type smoke detector. It is a radioactive device and uh, we will not be taking apart anything near where there is radioactive material. How these uh, detectors work is there's basically they're quite simple. There's some radioactive material that's held between two charged metal plates and um, the radioactivity ionizes the air that allows electric current to flow between the two plates and smoke entering the chamber disrupts the disrupts this uh, electric current and uh, the detector senses that causes an alarm so they're actually not that not that complicated how these things work and to take it apart I'm just going to simply pop the plastic clips open here and uh, we'll get a look at the inside of this thing I say they're, they're, they're relatively simple and this is probably why this isn't working because this little piezo element just fell right out and I bet I bet if I just put this back in place and power this thing up this unit would work this is the chamber here that contains the radioactive material so obviously we're not going to be uh, tampering with this at all because uh, that would release radioactive uh, gamma rays or whatever comes out of this thing. If we release the circuit board here, we can see the underside of the circuit board. Right, there's not a lot to this unit. If you were to cut this off, you would expose the uh, radioactive material, so don't do that. But anyway, uh, as you can see, pretty simple design. There's an IC underneath here, which is what's going to be measuring the current uh, flowing through the uh, ionization chamber. Uh, again, the piezo element came off on this thing, and that's all that's probably wrong with this, is this little piezo buzzer fell off, or it might even just be held in place by by contact and just the connection was bad in fact, that looks like that's the way it is this is not even it's not even uh, it sits in there like that and it just sits on top of these little springs and maybe the little springs got a bit weak so if I just stretch those out a bit we'll put the circuit board back in place and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna for, for the hell of it power this thing up and just see what happens it's obviously not going back into service because this thing's been retired. It's very old and uh, it's it's beyond its rated lifespan because all these ionization type smoke detectors uh, work or are only good for about 10 years. Uh, was there a date code on this? Yeah, 2003 was when this one was manufactured. So they're good for about 10 years, so this one should have been uh, replaced in 2013. The other one that I've got like this is also going to get replaced because, again, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's past its expiration date. But uh, that's, the, that's the inner workings of this. I'm just going to snap it back together. We'll power it up for the hell of it and see if it buzzes now like, like it did before. But uh, then it's going to uh, go off to the recyclers. Okay, I've powered the unit up. And it's working. That's all it was, was the, the piezo buzzer had uh, gotten a bit... Uh, dirty there and I bet if I were to test this thing with real smoke I bet this smoke detector still will function 
it just may not function at the same efficiency as uh, it would when it was new. Again, it's it's more than 10 years old. The radioactive emission does fall as the radioactive material ages. However, saying that, these operate by ionizing the air and allowing electrons to flow. As the radioactive material decays, it will ionize less air, which will result in less electrons passing through the ionized air, which in theory should trigger the smoke detector. Now we can test this thing by actually creating a fire. Let's try that and see if it will actually detect smoke. For this demonstration, I'm gonna light a fire and see whether this will pick up the smoke from this fire that I'm gonna light. Well, I guess I have to turn on the gas in order to light the fire. Okay, so let's see whether the smoke detector will detect the smoke. I think we, I think it's, I think it's pretty safe to say this one works. Yes, <laughs> you can get, you can get, uh, you can buy smoke, right, in a can for testing. But if you ever want to test a smoke detector out and see if it really works, just, that's all you got to do is just a little bit of paper and even the residual smoke that's still coming out of this thing now will probably set it off. But that's pretty quick how that thing worked. Okay. Didn't take long for the smoke to set it off. So, as old as this thing is, it's still functional. We're going to try the same experiment with the new smoke detector. I'm going to just light my... I'm going to just do the same. I'm going to light some paper. And we're going to see how long it takes the new one to trigger. Now, the new one has what they call anti-faulting technology. So, it shouldn't trigger as quick, but it should still go off in a timely manner. So, let's... Let's create some smoke. I should point out that this new smoke detector is a photoelectric smoke detector, not an ionization, so it does not have any radioactive material. Photoelectric smoke detectors operate by passing a beam of light through the smoke detection chamber and the smoke will scatter the beam of light. And typically it's a laser that they're using on a lot of the newer ones, but uh, they respond to different types of fire than the ionization type. Ionization type smoke detectors respond best to fast burning flaming fires, whereas photoelectric respond best to smoldering type fires. So I have to create a smoldering type fire here by covering up and letting the actual paper uh, smolder. It will go off though and it will respond. And for the best protection, you should have both types in your house, both a photoelectric and an ionization type smoke detector so that you can detect both uh, smoldering and fast burning fires. Once it trips, and it has tripped, and even though it's we've cleared the smoke, it is now in a uh, in a lockdown mode, so it won't sense again. So, like if you have a if you trigger it from, say, uh, you know something flaring up on your stove, and you you clear the smoke away, it actually will be in a lockdown state now. It's got a red flashing light here to indicate that it's in a lockdown state because it's gone off. Uh, the way to reset the newer ones like this is you just once you've cleared the smoke, you just press and hold the test button, and it'll beep once, 
and then the light turns green indicating that the smoke detector is now reset and ready to respond to the next event. Anyway, now you know how to test a smoke detector using real smoke. No better way to test it than that. You can buy artificial smoke in a compressed can that you can just spray at them and that will also work. Or, I say, the poor man's way to do it, just get yourself a glass jar, put a little bit of paper in it, light it, and oh, by all means, have some water around just in case, right? I just cover the jar with my hand though. It's not like it's hot. If your smoke detector goes off when it detects smoke, you know it's working. Thanks for watching.